Alright, so remember to unmute everything today, switch us to the proper screen. Alright, so welcome back guys. I believe this is our 37th or our 38th episode of Ophion. I just really have one sort of primer for this episode. Uh, today is going to be very RP-centric. And by that I mean I have maybe a few lines of notes for the basic plot, but I'd like to take the time for us to explore our characters a little bit more. Um, I feel like we haven't done that in quite a while, so this might be just a good time to check in with your characters and, you know, maybe interact with some supporting characters that haven't really had time in the limelight, things of that nature. But, uh, as I said before the stream, let's go ahead and jump right in, and I'd like to make the offer, open offer to anyone here. Uh, if you would care to do a recap, or at least hit the major points of last session... Um, I would be willing to let you all start off with two momentum. So would anyone like to take Ooh. a look at it? <laughs> it was a month I ago or something? Think, it it was indeed I a remember. month ago. I believe I remember at least the salient details. I nominate the captain. Of course you would, because uh, the captain volunteered. That's what the captain does. Um, okay, so it started off with a firefight with some defense drones in the uh, alien... Um, Alien Cerebros, for lack of a better term. Um, they We finally destroyed the defense drones and were let out, after which point several questions were uh, pointed at uh, Shatsu's uh, genetic lineage and was found out that this facility was built by her ancestors, or at least one of their originate, or, originating species. The, the Thalen. Thalen, thank you. Thalen. <clears throat> um... After, while attempts were, uh, it was also determined that there would be a very short window for the Ophion to escape, at which point the scramble began to convince people that, hey, maybe stay living your life on a uh, desolate, randomly hopping around planetoid isn't the best for you. Uh, so the, sl the Slaw and Queen Zenixia agreed to evacuate, as well as half of the colonists or descendants on the ship or the crashed ship. Um, it was, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. After which point the, uh, how people were going to control the uh, machine to manually open the gate for us to get out was put forward. Um, Shatsu was the most qualified to operate it because of her, genetic lineage, but there was some debate about whether or not she really wanted to do it. So we found alternatives, and it was uh, Pinek who was going to implant Shatsu's brainwaves onto someone. It was it was it was it Miss Skull? It was indeed your great granddaughter. Yeah, my great granddaughter, I think, just granddaughter actually. You know, a little but column A, little column B, who knows? Yeah. Um, Pinek failed the first time, uh, at which point the captain told him to man up Vulcan and do it again. Um, that kind of broke something within Pinek, so I'm going to be interested to see how this plays out. Uh, but um, the grand uh, Vela Skull, I believe her name was, was successful in opening and maintaining the gate while the rest of us evacuated. Uh, so we went through the gate, rather overloaded with uh, civilians. I'm not sure they, but we have enough space for all of them. But hey, we have them, and now we venture into the unknown once again. Alrighty. Um, so don't we also have some kind of uh, something, something about Starfleet not telling people something, something? Uh, yes, that's from a couple of sessions earlier. Um... Yeah, we went to do relief effort for a colony that had been sort of taken over by Orion slavers. And right. in the process right. of finding out, I think it was specifically like, what's his name, Captain Harlock, mm -hmm. uh, gave mm -hmm. us a tip. And we found out, um, actually, this colony's been under Orion slaver control for the better part of like five years, three years, something like that, if not longer. Something like and that. And yeah. And the, and the weird thing was, there is a record of a Federation ship being in the area receiving the distress call, but then when they notified Starfleet, they got a sort of priority communicate back telling them to ignore the distress call and keep moving. 
Yeah. And there is no record of who sent that order or why. It's just everything's been scrubbed clean. And isn't wasn't there something else about, um, or maybe something completely different? But Harlock bringing oh, up that, some, and we something to, about. Oh, oh, sorry. I was gonna say Harlock brought up something about another race that got like um, hot shotted uh, into Starfleet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was. We were going to look or is that, that something completely different? That was the that was Nezcov. that was a different species. Okay, the Nezkov. Nezkov, yeah. who are in uh, the Shackleton Expanse, who are also oh, strong armed into the Federation. And when the and when um, Skull went to the Sector Admiral and said, uh, "Hey, can you look into this mysterious uh, communicate and not answer to the stress call?" The Admiral came back and said, um, "I don't have the clearance to get that information." Right, and then so I think, deep. and I think a couple of us. I don't know if Locke did, but I know I did. Tried to go through other channels to get uh, information, Something. and just stonewall on all fronts. Well, I, so I well, I guess you could say it's stonewall. I haven't heard anything back, but then again, we also jumped into like other stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, then we went to see a test of a prototype Romulan. Uh, improbable, infinite improbability drive, which went as bad as well as you'd expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, nice. actually, yeah. uh, I mean, not infinite improbability drive. No, it was um, j just a really powerful singularity core. If by really powerful you means literally opens a tear in the space time. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's right. It was a modified space time weapon mm -hmm. that they turned into a generator. Because when you uh, when you want a powerful core, what do you do? You look at an explosion and think, "I want to make that." Okay, how could I make that explosion last longer? And and I believe even their own scientists said, "Oh yeah, we reverse engineered a doomsday weapon and made a ship out of it." Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which which honestly, as Federation, I have to admit, I am, I do, I do approve. It's kind of like their idea was good. Execution, maybe not so much. All right. Well, uh, gentlemen, that is a more than adequate recap. I'll give you three momentum for it. Ooh. And we are going to actually just kind of jump right in after the Ophion heads through the portal. Now, uh, I don't have the map in here, but if you have the map of the... Uh, of the book, the one that comes with STA. Uh, it's on page three, I believe, of the PDF. Um, so narratively what happens is there's kind of bumps and uh, thuds throughout the ship as the Ophion sort of transitions through this anomaly, this space-time anomaly. And it almost sounds like the hull is being teared apart, or torn apart, I should say. And... This lasts for maybe a good five seconds before everything dies down, and there's just sort of shipboard silence. And on the bridge, uh, let's cut to the bridge. And you will have to excuse me, it, is, it has been a while since I've messed with these maps. So, uh, On the bridge, uh, those of you that are there, where's Locke? There's Locke. Get back to your station, Locke. Uh, Locke. Uh, you're going to notice that you are once again in uh, clear open space. There is no sign of the planet you were just on. And preliminary scans show that the stars are where they should be. Is Panek on the bridge? Uh, that is up to Panek. Uh, well, I, I'd like to kind of RP that thing I sent you. Okay, yeah, we'll that. say, uh, Panek, you are currently not on the bridge. As I had thought. Okay. S status report. Systems are still coming back online. That was a bit of a journey. Still waiting back to hear from any uh, telemetry stations to see if we can identify our uh, location and time. Uh, tactical situation, Drake? Uh... A board, the board appears to be green. Um, other than the ship feeling like it's shaking itself apart, I think we're good to go, Captain. Thank you. Engineering. Mirthrin, please report. 
Well, we haven't blown up. Given what we've been through, I'll take that as good news. I can tentatively give you warp. Locke, any sign of any potential hazards in our general vicinity? Uh, still scanning. It's, I, I don't detect anything as of yet other than, well, the usual stellar radiation stars. Do we All detect right. any obvious hazard? What, what's, what's the situation? Okay. Um, if you would care to roll me a very basic reason science, uh, difficulty zero actually accounting for advanced sensors. Uh, and if someone could roll the ship sensors and science, please. I'll All grab right. the ship. Okay, there's two momentum already. Look at that. All right. Uh, ship is sensors and science, you said? Correct, Amundo. Wow. Uh, the so, ship says yes, I see it. Yeah, so I guess there is a floating momentum which you can use to ask a question. Though I think as a science officer, you automatically get a question, so I guess you get two questions. So um, just, uh, where are we? When are we? Okay. So, <laughs> when are you? Uh, as I said, the stars are where they should be, which means that unless you're uh, stellar cartography and astro navigation libraries are, I hate to say the term, out of date. Um, you are seemingly within, say, plus or minus a year or two um, where you should have been, as if you've arrived mm -hmm. possibly either before, uh, right as you left, or slightly thereafter. But it's not mm -hmm. significant enough uh, that your senses are able to determine it. Um, as uh, worst as... case scenario, we just have to not go in the area of space we were in a year ago. Uh, I, I think we are back. We are about a year in the past. Give or uh, take. Uh, it's a few months back. So I think we should just lay low for a bit. Uh, repair the ship. Uh it's uh, general region seems to be about the same, kind of ballparked, I think. Yeah, and speaking of region, uh, hopefully you guys have found that map by now, and if not, I'll circle it later for you. But uh, if you would care to look at the map, uh, if you see the Zenkethi Coalition, uh, mm -hmm. and you see the Hellespont Nebula to the north of it, uh, you guys you are guys somewhere are between so the Hellespont Nebula and Theta Cygni. Theta C. Ah, oh, I see it up at the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so a little out of the ways, but within cruising distance of the Federation. Mm-hmm. Ish. Pro probably after we've properly repaired the ship. Yeah. Right. And just so I, mean... I, I think I think I know where Locke went with this, but just so everybody does know out of character, you're not actually you're in the past, but you don't know the specific plus or minus quite yet. Yeah, I just, I, I DM's this crush, I'm just doing it for... No, 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 I just, I, I, I thought you would, I just, I just wanted to be sure so everyone was on the same page. And as it is, we're a little too far out of range to sync up our chronometers. Yeah, we're, I'm estimating based on it, but this is an unfamiliar star charts, and we don't have any particular formal basis estimation. So I would advise not calling home immediately. Very um, well. And the map we're referencing is the Sabine Expanse one, correct? Uh, no, actually, we're oh. referencing. I'll put it the in, one in the book. Uh, Discord uh, chat. Al Alpha that. Quadrant. Oh, okay, um, I just picked up the Sabine Expanse one you'd given us. Um, yeah, we're way off to the north of that one. Uh, yeah, okay. we oh, are yes. way off to the northeast of the Sabine Expanse at the moment. Oh, okay, I see it. I see it. Um, this is the. Oh, hey, at, at least we're not like stuck in the middle of somebody else's territory, right? Yeah. That's a lovely thing. I mean, as far as we know. Yeah, yeah. so actually, yeah, it would be a, like I-1 or something like that in the, the Sabine Expanse. I mean, c considering we're as close to the Zenkethi as we are to Federation space, it's not ideal, but... It is what it is. Okay. 
There is the Fringy Alliance, and we are in the past. Anyone know of any deals we could make? <laughs> Do some insider probably trading? make a killing on sports betting. Um, does uh, threatening the the uh, Ferengi to not break their rip their ears off count as a business proposition? Depends if you're. Uh, depends how Nausicaan you're feeling that day, Lieutenant. Oh, that's a better one. Uh, yeah, we can do uh, business deals with him. You can bet him that I'll beat up a Nausicaan. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. Faith. Well, we don't seem to be in immediate danger. Maintain yellow alert for now, and let's focus on getting our ship back operational. And I'm just going to glance over my shoulder and look at the con the empty uh, station behind me. Scald a Panek. Connect here, Barton. Get to my quarters immediately. Very well. Uh, Lieutenant Drake, you have the con. Uh, I, Captain, and um, uh, don't forget to holler if you need it. Mm. If I you don't hear from me in ten minutes, send a security... Uh, I Captain. <clears throat> and Drake will walk over and, like, you know, uh, like they do on, on TNG. He'll wave over someone to take over tactical, and he'll take the big chair. Okay. All right. As I head down the uh, turbo lift, um, uh, Skull to Merthrin. Merthrin here. We're in the clear for now. Um, if you feel the need to press gang any of the slaw or any of the descendants who have engineering experience to help you out, feel free. I mean, we're we're past the stage of total emergency, but we're going to need to find a space dock or something because, like, at the moment, it's not men we it's not manpower we need; it's resources. We are missing several key components. Uh, the dilithium crystals are still a week or so away from defusing. Um, Dr Drake will chime up as the captain's walking in turbo lift. Uh, don't worry, Captain. We'll we'll handle that up here. Just mm. handle everything else. That's why they pay me the big we'll bucks, the big Lieutenant. Bucks, All right. So, uh, Panek, since I've seen where you're going with, this, going with uh, this, if you would uh, care to describe <laughs> the... Well, I guess uh, the Captain hasn't entered your thing yet. So, I guess, Captain, you arrive outside yep. Panek's quarters. Mm-hmm. I'll push the chime button. Come in, Captain. Quickly now. Okay. There are things that must be said before this pathetic excuse for a Vulcan puts me back in my cage. Right. Uh, as as you enter, the room, of course, is very Vulcan Spartan-like and very, very uh, dimly lit. And my back is to you, and I'm lighting uh, a row of meditation candles. How are you faring, Commander? As well as could be in this horrible vessel. I have to tell you something, Skull. You do not deserve to command this vessel. And I turn, after I light the candle and turn to you. Your mind is as weak as your spine. And were it up to me, it would break both of them. I find you a pitiable creature. Who were it not for the desperation of others, would it not would have been quietly forgotten in a corner. How do you expect these beings to follow you to their deaths when you run and hide in your quarters at the triggering of another episode? You... Who am I speaking with right now? You are speaking to Panek, the real Panek, the, the unburdened Panek. I see. My chains have been removed. <clears throat> Well, unburdened Pinnock, as you can see, I'm standing here, fully straight-spined, and I'm now in far better capabilities of... I'm far better capable of handling myself than you seem to be. Oh, I... I, I certainly admit that my, my abilities are not as what they should be. If only I could free myself of this 
other Pinnek, this weaker Pinnek who subscribes to logic instead of his inherent might and, and ability. And as, as I'm talking to you, I, I hold my hand over a candle flame, letting it burn my flesh and, and a, an acrid smell fill the room. I'll let smirk a bit as I turn my nose up. I thought I would leave our friend a gift to remember me by. I see there's much to discuss, but I choose not to discuss it with you. I don't know this I don't know this side of Pinnek, and I must admit I don't like it. I'll take my com I'll take my commander back. You will have him back, but not until I've had my say. I, I, right now is not the time to make my move. The prudent thing is to allow him to take his semblance of control, his his logic to chain me again. But remember, Captain, you are unworthy of this ship, of that rank, that uniform, and also of that worm in your belly. What hell it must be to be shackled to a creature as pathetic as you. It must be absolute torture being you. You have no idea the hell. To sit here in this cage and look out, knowing that you could control and master all of this, but to be bound by some principle that is idiotic and wasteful. <clears throat> That's... I think I begin to finally understand you, Pinek. I've always heard that there was the... that many Vulcans are... Uh, take great steps to control their emotional sides, and now I can understand why. And yet here you are looking at an individual like me who literally has another emotion who literally has another being inside him. But I don't fight him. I work with it. And because of which I'm a far stronger person than either Barton or Skull. So I'm Captain Barton Skull of this vessel. It's because I want to be, and because I've earned this, regardless what your dark half says. Very well, then, Captain. And to the half of the Panek that, or to the Panek that I respect, please, take as much time as you need to recover. I will be on the bridge, and if you wish to discuss, I am here for you. And I'll turn on my heel and, and uh, stride out. One last thing, Skull. Okay, I, not... tur I turn into the uh, door in the open doorway. Do not forget that I'm in here as well, and I'm always watching and waiting. Oh no, thank you very much for uh, enlightening me of your presence. I will be far better prepared to deal with you next time we meet, if there is a next time. And I'll turn away from him and light more candles. I make a note to double uh, Pinex morphine levels. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, I uh, I was getting uh, Tuvok vibes. That one episode where Tuvok goes postal. Mm -hmm. It's very good stuff. All right. So where are you headed after that, Captain? I'm curious. Oh, it has been a couple days. The ship is more or less uh, happy, or at least stable. I think I'm going to go and have a nap. Okay. In that case, we're going to cut to someone else, and that someone else happens to be in engineering. <laughs> and let me just do some uh, token management here. But uh, in engineering, uh, of course, you all are discussing the, well, I would call it a repair plan of some sort. Uh, however, at the same time, uh, there are more bodies present than there usually are. And by that, I mean... Uh, you obviously have some sloth from Beta Colony that are uh, more than capable and more than willing to help you out. But there's also another presence uh, on uh, with you at the same time. And it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, Queen Zenixia herself is also present. And uh, she and regular Zenixia are taking up the same sort of side of the table. 
Um, and for the moment, they seem to just sort of be working together, bouncing ideas off of one another, and yeah. That's yeah. And, I I, I'd imagine sort of Merthred and Prague are standing on the other side, sort of looking sideways at each other and just not sure how to proceed. Well, uh, Prague will certainly whisper to you at some point, and he says... Look, th this is more confusing than a Ferengi trying to be charitable. I, I, I got nothing, Lieutenant Commander. I mean, on the plus side, they don't seem to be aggressive with each other. I, I honestly don't think Xenixia could be mean or aggressive at all. I, I don't think there's a bone in her body that could... You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Well, I don't think there's a bone in her body, so... <laughs> Well, oh, Slough is certainly helpful. I'll give them that. Hmm. Uh, oh, what a nightmare. Uh, are there any records of spacefaring civilizations this far out of Federation space? Well, let me consult the map. We, um... we were just we were just talking about that in um in Discord. Uh, it's either going to be going uh, across to Nanobula, being their uh, um, uh, founding founding species, they should probably be okay. Um, or um, Starbase 621 would be the next closest. Closer. Or uh, I'm sorry, I have that flipped. Um, uh, thanks, Scott. Um, Denobula should be about 50 light years. 621 should be about 30-ish. But it's going to be a bit of a trip either way because, like, we're basically on emergency warp power at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, by the looks of it, probably going to Denobula is going to be the the in in, in air quotes safest. Um, so we don't have to worry about going around the Zenkethi or through the um, Hellspot Nebula. Mm. Uh, quick, quick back of the envelope calculation: How dodgy would it be to? try and make it to Denobula on a half-functional warp drive. I believe I have these somewhere in my notes. Yes, here we are. So, at your current mm -hmm. best capable speed, uh, I have two options, so I'll need to calculate for Denobula. But, so, I had written down that Gamma 7 and Sardabase 621 are your two closest uh, outposts for the Federation. Uh, Gamma 7 is going to take approximately four weeks, and Starbase 621 is about three and a half weeks. No, three weeks. Uh, just eyeballing the distance, I think Denobula would also be about four weeks. Hmm. Uh, I really don't want to push this thing any further than it has to go before we can do a full refurbish of the engines, so... What sort of what sort of facilities does six two one have? Well, uh, uh, see he internet says internet. calling up the computer. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, regular Zenixia. Uh, I'll just say Q Zenixia. So just yeah. don't think she's an Zenixia actual and queen. queen uh, oh or an actual God. Q, but... No more Qs. No yeah. more Qs. Um, so regular Zenixia pulls up the uh, schematics of Starbase six two one and sort of a holographic display uh, shows up above the table. And you see that it is actually a very old-looking station. Uh, and I think our lovely doctor will appreciate where I'm going with this. But uh, it is a station that was quite literally built around and sort of refurbished uh, around the Zenkethi War. Or at least the brief skirmish, however you want to qualify it. Uh, sort of during the Dominion War and the events leading up to it. Uh, Starbase 621 was pretty much reactivated and more or less brought up to quote-unquote current standards. But on the exterior, it definitely looks like something out of Kirk days. Um, I honestly forget the type of station it is, but uh, Peter, do you remember? Uh, Watchtower class, uh, it's a variant. I don't remember what variant it is. Uh, Watchtower class is close enough. Um the good news is that it is large enough of a starbase that uh, it can easily accommodate the Prometheus class, the Ophion. And the other thing is that while it is very close to Zenkethi space, 
uh, relations with the Zenkethi are, I wouldn't say great, wouldn't say bad. They're just sort of there at the moment. Um, Very cordial. Yeah, it's kind of like, hey, you're near our space. Here's some liaisons. As long as nothing goes bad, we'll coexist together kind of a thing. All right, that's probably our best bet. I mean, apart from anything else, they can, they've probably got enough resources for us to replenish our replicator supplies. We're going to be needing it at the rate we're going through food. Regular Zenixia speaks up and says, About that, uh, Lieutenant Commander, I was curious. Uh, as it is, we are currently using cargo bays and uh, industrial replicators to uh, facilitate everyone, but should we perhaps maybe convert some of the transporters that we're not using into additional replicators? Hmm. Could be doable. I mean, it wouldn't, wouldn't be very much used for food grade stuff, but we could repurpose a couple of the transporters into industrial replicators and then turn some of the industrial replicators into makeshift food replicators. Hmm. Oh well. It's pro probably our best bet. It's not like we can really do much with the engines now except maintain them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need proper we need proper repair tools and like ideally we get this the ship into a dry dock, but that's going to take a while. And on that note, uh, we are going to start sort of a series of extended tasks. Uh, the first extended task is uh, Mirthrin, you're just doing a basic lay of the land, getting a feel for what you could do with the materials you have Ooh, on hand. Alrighty. And this I think is I actually going have to... some talents that help with this. Yeah, so this is going to be either a reason or an insight engineering. Uh, the base difficulty here is going to be a one, and the magnitude is only a two. And the work track is all of six. So it's a very easy oh. extended task. Uh, oh, I <laughs> Uh, and I've just noticed I've uh, actually the last talent I take is actually almost exactly perfect for this. Oh, go ahead. Uh, all right, so it was reason and engineering or insight reason. engineering. Yeah. So, well, I'll go with reason because that's actually my highest stat. Okay. And I've got I know my ship. Oh, that's it for a normal task though. I don't think that applies for extended tasks. Uh, that's a a I bonus d twenty when a turn. It's a bonus d20 when attempting to determine the source of a technical problem with the ship. Oh yeah, I'd let that apply. Alright, so there's that. And then I also have intense scrutiny. When you succeed a task using reason or control as part of an extended task, ignore up to two resistance for every effect rolled. Oh, that, that's definitely going to come into play here. Alrighty, so reason engineering with a bonus d20, I've... Eh, what the hell. We've got, we're at max momentum. I may as well spend the momentum for four dice. Alright. Uh, pretty sure I've got an applicable focus. One second. Oh yeah, you've got one. Don't worry. Yeah, she have power systems. Uh, doesn't he get a bonus for doing any type of uh, engineering while in engineering? Good point. So uh, oh, difficulty, no, here's, difficulty here is actually a zero. So just don't roll a complication, really. Alrighty. Engineering, four dice. Or I could do that. Uh, um, I will say you can spend two of that momentum to get rid of the complication. I will do that. Okay, so you're back at cap and you have one floating. And uh, if you can now roll me your challenge die here. So seven challenge die total. Yeah. Yeah. So... Excellent. Here's the basics, and of course, you're feel, you feel free to embellish or make up additional problems or come up with inventive solutions to other things, but here's what I have written down. Uh, obviously, you've already identified that the dilithium crystals, in order to get everything back and running at quote-unquote top efficiency with the warp core, it's going to be either about a week's worth of work on normal shifts, or if you do a little bit of... Uh, shall we say, unorthodox Starfleet engineering. It could be back up sooner. Uh, you think you might be able to do something in that regard. 
Uh, as far as the sections of the ships are concerned, uh, the good news is you don't have any holes out into open space at the moment. Uh, either emergency bulkheads are in place or uh, force fields are holding. Uh, however, you will notice that in order to go to warp, you're either going to have to expend a little bit more power than usual to maintain uh, structural integrity, or you're going to have to devote some time to using what little stores you have remaining uh, in this regard to patching up the hull. Uh, then there is the problem, which was just recently identified. Uh, you need to find a way to uh, feed these extra mouths. And you've already sort of floated the idea of turning industrial replicators and uh, transporters into one another. And then finally, uh, the sort of last big problem that I had come up with um, is the fact that your weapon systems, while you are semi-confident that you could fire off, you know, maybe a couple blasts, uh, the EPS conduits are, shall we say, they could use someone looking at them to make sure that they're not going to blow out on Deck 5 again. Mm hmm Good old Deck 5. Hmm. So, given that the weapon systems are kind of knackered as it is, mm -hmm. um, proton torpedoes have like built-in sort of warp coasting drives in them, right? Sort of, yeah. Uh, they're also quote unquote self-targeting, which means you don't really need the computer except to maybe lock onto a onto something. something. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking that we might be able to, like, take some of the torpedoes and cannibalize them into makeshift power supplies to sort of take the load off the engine. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not going to say no to an inventive idea like that. Like, a, I, we don't want to be fighting anything in this shape anyway, so... Yes, because we need the power to keep the structural fields, and the supplies we have really need to go into keeping the engine running or repairing it if something breaks unexpectedly so yeah i think Mertheran's going to sort of requisition about half of the remaining torpedo payload and organize some extra shifts on top of the regular maintenance shifts to go about converting them into power packs and distributing them throughout the ship to do things like power lights power replicators that sort of thing so anything that any anything that could easily be separated out from the main power system without interfering with stuff. Okay. And as that's going on, uh, we're actually going to cut to sick bay because it's been a while. There's sick bay. There's sick bay. All right. So, uh, Prier, uh, you are currently overseeing uh, everything going on in sick bay. Uh, good news, you don't really have many wounded to speak of. Uh, obviously, there's been a, a few bumps and bruises along the way, but for the most part, all of the uh, injuries from when you first transitioned to the, uh, I guess you would call it an alternate timeline, uh, all of them have been handled, and for the moment, you have an empty sick bay. Oh, did we lose him? Uh, you cut out for me. Oh, uh, where did I cut out? Uh, some bumps and bruises, then you cut out. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so you have an empty sick bay for the moment. Uh, you've kind of handled all of the uh, bumps and bruises as they came in. And as I said, it's pretty much just you and Lieutenant Vara at the moment. I turned to Varro. Well, that was an exciting experience, I will say. How was Sick Bay while I was helping Shatsu not get attacked by things? Well, uh, I'll say this much uh, Commander Beckett would have uh, had a field day with how I handled things, but, you know, I I'm, think it's probably safe for me to say that we, we handled that rather well. Good to hear. And, eh, 
we can we don't have to worry about what Beckett will do. We're our own team now. <laughs> of course, Doctor. Um, so why don't you and I come up with a plan since we have so many more people from those evacuating, we're going to need to utilize our supplies a little bit better. So let's figure out how we want to ration our things and in case of emergencies, be able to treat. All right. So she kind of goes over to her, picks up a pad, starts to uh, download the current inventory of sickbay. And she hands it to you after it's done downloading, and you see that there is approximately uh, a normal rate of consumption, quote-unquote. So, like, normal as in, like, people aren't being, you know, blown out conduits, and you're not dealing with, you know... I, I think I said it's something like double your normal ship complement. Um, so, normal supplies are going to last about six months. Uh, as they are now maybe you're going to last uh, maybe a month. Well, uh, I looked at Vara. We have about a month's worth of supplies with the amount of people on this ship under normal circumstances. And if we're repairing and people are getting injured from that, we're going to start to need to find alternative ways to either treat pain or utilize our supplies uh, because unless we can get to a place within a month, we could have a little bit of a situation on our hands. Savar so kind of thinks for a moment and says, uh, Doctor, why don't we uh, convert some of the biomimetic gel that we have in storage into usable supplies? It's a good way to start. Let's start exploring that option. All right. So the two of you... Uh start to head down in that direction to pick up some of the gel and we're going to cut back to the bridge because i believe that is where uh drake and Locke would be no not beta bridge regular bridge all right so uh back up on the bridge uh drake you're sort of sitting center chair uh skull you can come back whenever you feel like it and uh, all i'm saying is oh go ahead all i'm saying is that I've been on the ship longer. We're both the same rank. How come the captain didn't put me in charge? Not the question as orders, just you know. I mean, if if you if you want the big chair, I I don't want the big. Well, chair. I don't counter magic just, captain's orders. Just hypothetically, I'm just. I mean, mm. I, I he just told me, you know, to take over, but I don't. Uh, I guess Did maybe he, he thought a tactical more. Okay. Uh, captain on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I promoted. I had Lieutenant Drake take the command chair of Mister Locke because weapons and shields were functioning normally, and the science station was needed uh, all of your attention. It was just you know, conversation while I waited for this uh, diagnostic to finish. Of course, last one diagnostic. Make sure everything's calibrated so I can get the, the best accurate guess of where when when we are. Rather than right now, um, it's still telling me uh, uh, forty-eight weeks. So I could be ten and a half months in the past, but I'm hoping that once the diagnostic connection is, I can n narrow that down to the more accurate. That would be gr that would be lo love a, a good time and place. Oh wait, I've just remembered we've still got a Romulan commander on board. Do. We do, and I was going to resolve that shortly. Um, I'm just up on the bridge now, just taking current stock of the situation. I'm just sort of poking through pads at the moment. Out of curiosity, Sona, did you ever catch wind of what happened to your future self? I did I didn't notice I did notice that she was not uh listed as a member of the um Ulfian survivors. So in very mechanical fashion as Sona is wont to do, uh she simply replies my understanding, Captain, is that my... She kind of thinks, because even I'm trying to struggle for a word. Uh, not predecessor. What's the opposite Counterpart? of that? Successor? Successor, thank you. My successor was more or less destroyed when the Ophion crashed. Mm. 
as, as much as we like to think that Lieutenant Sona will outlive us all due to her artificial nature, she is still a first generation and requires fairly regular maintenance upgrades. She's actually probably more fragile and mortal than any of us. Uh, no offense, Lieutenant. None taken. That's a shame. I would have, I would have quite enjoyed the um, optimal performance of having two Sonas manning that massive uh, navigation console. Probably we could do things like move and shoot at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Drake, Drake looks up from his from his console. Is 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 that a dig to me? I mean, oh, no. I can I can move and shoot at the same time. <laughs> oh, not at all. Just. Um, making a joke about the system that we're in. Ah. Is the commander feeling all right? The commander experienced a severe mental uh, stress and has decided to meditate for a while until he can recuperate himself. He'll rejoin us when he is able to do so. In the meantime, I have to do his work and mine. Well, I was just going to ask that, Captain. Uh, who's going to take over in the meantime for XO? I'm, and please don't think that I'm bucking for, for a promotion. <sighs> uh, second in command, typical duties would fall to Lieutenant Commander Murthrin. I suspect, though, he is rather busy with engineering. Down in engineering, Murthrin feels a cold chill at the back of his neck <laughs> and doesn't sure why. <laughs> I don't think he'd appreciate the promotion anyway. But uh, I don't think we the chain of command needs to be tested at the moment. Uh, probably not, but it is a good thing to think about. Um, suit, we didn't. Uh, Commander Ty did. Did she go on Lysithia, or is she still on board? Uh, Ty is still uh, on the Ophion, and just sort of a rank check, both for stream and uh y'all's purposes i'm southern now deal with it um <laughs> i believe as far as lieutenant commanders are concerned you obviously have Murthrin, uh you've got ty you have shatsu and mm -hmm. the other lieutenant commander yeah they went to they went to the lysithia actually sue ty is full commander so she uh oh, we'll right. she did get a promotion yeah, yeah um uh, Skaldus, Commander, ah, Commander Ty, please report to the bridge. Yes, sir. On my way. Thank you for the reminder, Lieutenant Drake. Uh, not a problem, Captain. Um, just thought it might have been something that slipped your mind with everything else going on. A wise precaution. Um, Commander Ty, um, Mr. Panek is um, out of the we under the weather for the uh, due to the strain he suffered in, during our evacuation. You're to resume. You're to assume XO duties until further notice. Understood, sir. I will endeavor to complete them as well as Panek did. Excellent. In the meantime, I have a load of paperwork to deal with. And uh, could someone please, in, uh, please invite the, the Romulan to my, to my ready room? Aye, Captain. And as uh, Skull gets prepared in his ready room, uh, Locke, now that your station has finished its uh, level 3 diagnostic, uh, I'd like you to roll me two things. The first thing I'd like you to roll me is just a straight 1d100. Uh, that's a 1. Uh, Where has the time stream taken us? <laughs> okay. Very wow. close to what it rolled last. All right. Now I would like you to roll me a 1d12. Okay, so if everything is working as you think it is, and you're not getting bad data, you think that you are four days in the past from when you left. That's significantly better. <laughs> uh, let me know when the doctor has made it back to Bay, please. Sure. So, well, uh, when the captain's finished with the uh, Rami commander, which reminds me, uh, where's the mood light button? Still right in the room. 
<laughs> then we can uh, I can uh, have some good news. It's uh, we still need to get back to Federation space, but we don't have to worry about polluting the time stream. Um, and before we cut away from this scene to go to another one, a la mm-hmm. TV style, uh, Drake will um. We'll say, I'm, I'm really glad you're on the bridge, Commander Ty. Now neither Locke nor I have to keep the big chair warm. <laughs> Commander Ty, formerly of Gamma Squad, is pro- Gamma Shift is probably kind of dozing. Trying to like, uh, 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 uh. Oh, and, oh, that's a good point. Uh, uh, Drake will walk over with a cup of coffee. And she nods very thankfully, or very, uh, you know what I'm trying Appreciative. to say. Appreciatively, thank you. Gratefully. I uh, I didn't know you uh, knew I took it double sweet, but thank you. Eh, once you get to Commander, it's less creamer, more sugar. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And we cut to the ready room. So, Skull, uh, the Commander is not quite here just yet, so you do have a few moments to arrange things as you wish. Okay, I'm going to pull out a bottle of thick green liquid that's been hiding under my desk for the last few couple weeks. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, computer, play something. Play a samba. Half volume. Alright, so good old Latin beat kicks in because I know dance. Um, a good old uh, beat kicks in. It's uh, fairly upbeat. Uh, maybe a little too upbeat. Uh, computer, slow tempo by 20 beats per minute. Okay, so it, it turns Sorry. more into almost like a smooth jazz. My name is Cuban Pete. <laughs> I'm the king of the rumba beat. <laughs> when I play the maracas, they go chick chicky boom chick chicky boom chick boom chick chicky boom. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> We should do the Star Trek musical episode one day. Oh God! <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, oh, no joke. Oh. I think I've got a couple of scripts lying around which are just extended. How would the crew of the Enterprise change a light bulb? Jokes. Uh, oh God! O- only if, as uh, as Drake, I can be Worf and just t- sit there deadpan the entire time while everyone else is singing and dancing around him. I mean, I am not a merry man. Exactly. <laughs> I, mean, I, I have no problems with this. We'll have to investigate that in the future. But seriously. <laughs> yes, um, seriously. At this point, uh, you do get a chime at your door. Come in. All right, so, uh, with a security escort leaving her at the door, uh, Commander Vetu does step inside. Commander, thank you so much for your patience during all of this chaoticness. I hope you're finding your quarters comfortable. They are adequate. Splendid. Um, pull out the the bottle of green liquid. It's while Romulan ale is technically illegal within the Federation, according to our star charts, we're not actually in Federation space at the moment. I figured after the what we've been through, I you would enjoy a glass. I have to admit, I don't know the vintage, um, but I do know a Tellerite bartender, and he insulted this rather heavily, so I think that means it's a good one. Hmm. Such would be the fate of anyone who deals with a Tellerite. Very well. I will have a small glass of it. Very well. And uh, as you pour, uh, she just kind of casually observes, (laughs) I find it odd, Captain, that you wish to drink with me after the revelations which occurred to us on the planet. Look, as near as... Honestly, considering the revelations on the planet is why I'm actually more interested than previously. It's hmm. hard to find a... a scientific mind in a military... in a primarily military environment. And... Uh, given our previous attempts at, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> Blard. Uh, given our previous um, bah, um, bah, 
secret community yeah, secret communications. Well, I think it's about time to act be nice to chat casually face to face for the first time in a while. So she does that sort of Romulan yeah. thing where she does kind of a half smirk mm. and uh, she'll take any glass offered to her and she'll sort of sniff the beverage and say, hmm, I believe this is from the 23rd century, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. I'm afraid that my uh, Romulan vintages are not part of our Starfleet uh, Romulan dossier. Is that a, by chance, a good year? Depends on your tastes, I suppose. I believe well, there is a human drink called Scotch, and it is very similar to our ale, in that it can be made in a myriad of ways. Ah. Well, then I hope that this pleases both our palates. To finally reaching our own time. She'll sort of uh, raise her glass to that and... Uh, Skull, uh, if you're having a sip, I need you to roll me a uh, fitness security there, buddy. Difficulty two. Okay. This will be fun. Okay, fitness security. Where's my character? You and food. Me and food. I almost took the iron stomach focus, but not yet. Okay. Fitness security. And just in case it comes into play there is the trill uh, symbiote which prevents me from being poisoned mm -hmm. uh no focus always a, f a factor when uh drinking with ramen oh. <laughs> okay uh so out of character have you ever had fire water before <sighs> that was a nasty night in university uh, let's just say yeah. that this is worse than fire water okay um i take well to us. <laughs> oh, I see why it's illegal. <laughs> computer, water. <laughs> so the computer, not helping at all, says specify temperature. Cold, damn it. So yeah, a, uh, a cold glass uh, materializes and... Uh, uh. <gasps> okay. I'm probably beat red with embarrassment right now. Yeah, and to her credit, uh, Commander Vetu knocks it back like it's nothing. <sighs> Make mental note. Next time I drink with you, I need to pregame. <laughs> I believe it's some sort of quirk with Trill Biology that it hits you harder than it does a Romulan. Could just be your constitution. Hmm, perhaps. Uh, anyways, this is as much business as it is pleasure, Commander. We are finding ourselves on the far side of Federation space. It will take us, even at peak capacity, several months to get back to Romulan space. Um, you and uh, the survivors of your crew are more than welcome to stay on the Ophion if you wish. Um, or if you wish to find an alternate means back to Romulan territory, you're more than welcome to do so. Personally, I would, perform, I would prefer the former of the options. Well, Captain, I'm glad that uh, we're having this discussion because an, I an idea occurred to me. I can radio the Romulan Empire and request a rendezvous. However, I wanted to run it by you, as I obviously do not know the full nature of this vessel. Well, considering the distance between us and the Romulan neutral zone, it would be... We would have to clear it through several levels of, diploma of diplomatic channels but I see no reason why they can't at least send a Romulan diplomatic vessel halfway into Federation space if it gets clearance. Real quick, let me double-check some maps here. The map that you... Don't forget that half of the Cardassian uh, territory has been annexed by the Romulans, so they've got people there. Here it is. All right, so, yeah, so the one thing we have to remember about looking at any map is that we have to deal with the 3D plane, the Z-axis. 
So as Panek has pointed out, there is the former part of the Cardassian Union that the Romulans have taken over. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also some form of Romulan border with normal Cardassia space, or at least nearby, um, because otherwise they would have had to cross the Federation to get, uh, any help with the Dominion War. Um, so I always just kind of imagined it's almost like a, a half Taurus, uh, around the Federation space. Um, so to put it in mechanical terms... It's not impossible for the Romulans to send out a ship or two to meet you. But the question is, as the commander is hinting, is do you even want to meet or run or run the risk of meeting a Romulan uh, craft in your current state? Yes. <clears throat> Given the options available to us, commander, um, if you and your crew are comfortable here uh, I would prefer to get our ship ship shape first before we can present a present ourselves to the Romulans there's also the messy part of temporal displacement that we've yet to figure out precisely when we are yeah we don't want to go we don't want to uh, meet ourselves and and uh, prevent this whole catastrophe from happening, do we? Even though that does sound like a pretty good idea now that I've said it out loud. That too's quiet for a little bit, and then finally she says, I do not have much experience with temporal mechanics. To be honest, I have very little knowledge of it, but it occurs to me that if the, shall we say, passengers that were picked up from the colony are still here, then it stands to believe that we are unable to do anything that would change the timeline further. Or we just haven't initiated the events to change the timeline, in which case I would prefer not to initiate those events myself. That's a great deal of headaches. You can trust me on that. Yeah. Anyways, so that was the official reason I brought you up, Commander. The personal reason is, well, we made a pretty damn good, fine-looking uh, Romulan, tr uh, Romulan Trill uh, granddaughter. Are you interested in continuing our liaisons across space? And time. And time. I mean, uh, are the your communication protocols have so far appeared to be undetected by uh, Locke and uh, any of the other communication intercepts, interception technologies on this vessel. We could continue to use them if you wish. Narrator cuts in. Secretly, Locke has known the entire time. Why does that not <laughs> surprise me? <laughs> um... But no, uh, the commander does sort of smile and say, well, after this recent fiasco, if I'm not stripped of my rank and authority, I'll see about getting assigned somewhere closer to the Sabine Expanse. I'd like that, commander. I really would. Um, no. And I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you think that way. I'm just going to, uh, pass a, a small isolinear uh, data chip to her. If you happen to be around a working holodeck and wish to uh, wish to, um, how shall we say, get a more uh, physical experience, these are all my measurements. <laughs> oh, man. All right, time for a party wipe. Yeah, party wipe. Rocks <laughs> fall. Everyone dies. All right. So I think at that point is where we'll, we'll yeah. cut away to someone else because I don't <laughs> yes. even know how to react to that one. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Who have we not ta talked to in a while here? Uh, well, would anyone like to volunteer? Or should I just pick one of you? Well, actually, um, if Mithrin can get hold of Locke the next time he comes off shift. 
Sure. Uh, where would you like to get a hold of him? Um, I think Merthron would actually be sort of like hovering around the door to Locke's quarters to try and catch him as he comes off duty. Okay, so I'll just put us on this map then, and uh, you guys can start as I juggle some tokens. Mm-hmm. Quickly clears away all the candles. <laughs> 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 all right, let's see. There's Mirthrin. You're just kind of chilling outside, and there's Locke coming from the opposite direction. Are you, like, waiting outside there deliberately, or are you trying to, like, yeah. wait? Really yeah, he, he's like, just sort of leaning against, yeah, he's just leaning against the wall, waiting. Uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, hi, Commander. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello. Do you need help with anything in engineering? And so he sort of like tilts his head a little. Mind if we talk in private for a bit? Oh, uh, absolutely. Come in. Yep. So it follows you in. Hmm. So it looks around. Comes in there and discreetly starts taking plates and putting them in the replicator for disassembling. Hmm. Part of the mess, uh, I tend to. Uh, be busy working and doing things rather than uh, tidying. Are you, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable with how secure this room is? I, it can be more secure, or we could head down to one of the labs if you feel it is a, a matter of utter discretion. Hmm. Uh, I do have some toys fun. that can act as a scrambler for if you need be. Oh, some, something that'll prevent a conversation turning up on the logs would be useful. Okay. He reaches over, pulls out a couple devices, a few buttons. Kind of. This one will kind of uh, scramble any outside communication from the walls, and this will giving anyone listening in will just get white noise. Perfect. Uh, disable the communicate like my the computer terminal from mm -hmm. responding. Yeah. Mirthrin sort of detaches his com badge and sort of puts it off to the side, and then goes over and sits by the window. Uh, computer, we're a computer blackout zone. So. Sure. I suppose this is where you murder me or something. There's no evidence. Well, hopefully nothing that dramatic. But uh... <laughs> activate the code of silence. Yes. <laughs> uh, what is in this? Do you this remember stuff? the business with uh, the colony that had been taken over by the Orion slavers a few months ago? Uh, yes. Yeah, um, we yeah, was the Theta Sigma twelve. I was hoping mm. to get a little bit more of that from it. I hadn't gotten much from the uh, Missouri's logs yet. Mm, me neither. So, from what I can tell, everyone who everyone's who's been trying to get information on it has been hitting stone walls everywhere. I have an idea for a possible a possible lead that I could get once we get back into Federation space. But in the meantime. I don't like to admit it, but this goes a long way up the chain of command. It's like someone somewhere wanted to let, deliberately let that colony get taken over by slavers, and they don't want anyone to know who or why. Agreed. And there's also the the incident with the, the Nezkov colony. Mm. I got a, I was waiting a bit of a, a data packet dump of Federation logs on the incident mm. before we yes. life derailed us. And as much as I hate to have to follow the advice of a of a self-aggrandizing privateer like Harlock, I'd be foolish if I didn't pay attention to this. My point is. This is going to get very dangerous if we follow this all the way through to the end. And uh, we might find ourselves in need of mm, ways of defending ourselves when everyone thinks we're completely defenseless. I do have... Uh, that. That is my speciality. It is coming down. But you remember how... Uh, last year we were working on reverse engineering the um, out of character what's Farger species called again? Uh, the Fryqua. Uh, you remember last year we were working on reverse engineering the Fryqua rifle prototype into a more compact handheld version and then that sort of hit a brick wall? Yes. Have you, have you uh, made some progress at that? Mm. 
a little, but uh, I want to get your. I want to bring your help in for this. Um, I want to create a version. I, I want to create a version of it that can be, shall we say, smuggled past weapon sensors. Hmm. Tricky but doable. Hmm. As I'm thinking, like a phaser is recognizably a phaser even if you split it into its component parts it's you can't disguise a power pack you can't disguise a phaser focusing crystal but uh the rail the gun will be detectable because it yeah. it's not but the yeah the frequire rifle is an alien enough design that uh sister sensor system might not immediately pick up what it is especially if it was disassembled into individual components i mean granted uh four individual magnetic slides would look odd on their own, but they wouldn't automatically trip a weapon sensor. Hmm. And there are a few uh, engineering tools that might um, give up some signatures. You'd have to mm -hmm. use it as a kind of a, a uh, hide them as magnetic decouplers. Mm -hmm. We and, could uh, even do something yeah, with the, uh, the actual... And I'm thinking the actual coil part itself might, might be able to pass as uh, maybe a medical tricorder. I do have some other yeah ways of hiding various components about a body. Mm. Our, our boots so, do have uh, some very nice uh, soles, which can hide quite a bit of stuff. I've, I've had a little bit of experience hiding things in those. Uh, would, this, uh, would you be considering using this weapon on mostly in the Ophion are you worried about, or else? Elsewhere, I'm I'm anticipating that at some point we're going to find ourselves isolated from help and needing to fight our way out. And I would like to have an insurance policy. Because I was reading something about, uh, I was looking at some technology that was used in exocomps so of a micro replicator built into a device. So it's mm -hmm. easy enough to disguise some simple machinery by just having a quick portable replicator unit can kind of generate mm. a piece. So you just need to have yeah. the unreplicatable parts and yes. it'll assemble. Uh, especially if we don't need, because the trouble we've been having, we had originally was trying to miniaturize it and get it compact as a phaser while still being effective. If we don't need to worry about that, if we only need to be able to dismantle it and reconstruct it at the other end, we could stick with the original rifle design and probably make it a lot more concealable. Yeah, um, it'd probably be uh, significantly less concealable considering we were... Well, less concealable once you actually ball. assemble it, but the individual components could be hidden a lot around a uniform. Individual components and uh, engineering toolkit. It's doable. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you know of any uh, labs or workshops on the ship which could be screened out while we work on it? Yeah, my primary science lab, yes, can definitely be isolated. Excellent. I'll uh, get, get in contact with you after the next shift, see if we can organize a time and a pretense to work on it. Uh, sounds interesting. Forward to the challenge. The challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, let us, uh, and let's hope that we'll never actually need to use it. But just in case. All right. So, uh, memory serves, Panek. You wanted to know when the doctor was back in sick bay. Yes. Yes, indeed. All righty. In that case, uh, Prier, unless you have any uh, pressing matters, let's say you've returned to sick bay by this point. Uh, all right. And yeah, All right. I'm assuming you want you want to be walking in at this point. Yeah, I'll walk in. Pidek walks in, and he's uh, his uniform is vis visibly disheveled, and the front is unzipped, and uh, he just looks like he's. Hold on a second. Uh, he looks like he's uh, completely focusing on just moving forward towards the the doctor and the nurse. I turn at the door. Commander, what has happened to you? I require a dermal generator, a regenerator. Uh, right away. Vara, 
grab the dermal regenerator. She does, and uh, kind of goes between the two of you, not really sure who to hand it to at this point. I'll take I... it from her. Oh. And I, I, I look at the cat. I look at the the doctor as he goes to to reach for it as well, and uh, just maintaining eye contact with him, I begin just using it to heal my palm, and then I say to uh, Nurse Vara. I need a hyperspray with a maximum dose of Luxorin. And at that, Vara definitely looks at you, Pierre. She wants to know what you think of this. Uh, I'm sorry, Commander, but we're in full ration mode uh, with all of our medical supplies, with the amount of people on the ship. Uh, I can give you a smaller dose, but not a maximum dose, just because we are in full conservation mode. Very well, Doctor. And I, I'm, well, my face is kind of just like fighting to just not snap at him. Vara, can you grab me that hyperspray? On it, sir. And uh, yeah, at this point, uh, as has been mentioned in uh, Discord chat, uh, Doctor, you know what Luxorin is used for. Just sort of, so sort of the rest of the stream, I suppose, is uh, kind of a thing. Uh, usually, Luxorin is used to deal with those who have sort of a multiple personality disorder uh, after a Vulcan mind meld. Um, I believe it was used. Yes, it was used in uh, the search for Spock. So this is something that uh, kind of a big deal. So, Panek, why are you in need of this Luxorin? That is a personal matter, Doctor, one I do not care to share with you. Uh, if need be, I can uh, sanction its release with my own uh, command abilities. No, I will give you the Iowa Spray. Just, I would prefer that you check in with me with uh, every so often with this drug. I sit the dermal regenerator down and I kind of sigh and I say, I will take that under advisement, Doctor. And then I will hold my hand out for the hyperspray. Yeah, and this time Vara deliberately hands it to uh, Pierre first. Uh, Pierre had his hand outstretched to grab it from her. Yeah. Don't make me have to use my doctor's command to put you out of command for the time being, Panek. I move and step very close to him. And I kind of say, threats are unnecessary, Doctor. And Maybe then I so. will... Oh, now yeah. that is a power yeah. move. <laughs> it's not a threat, Panek. This is a very dangerous drug that comes along with mind melds. If you're having issues from the mind meld, you need to let us know so we can help you. I am taking the correct precautions, and I am which is, seeing... Good. Uh, which is why I'm asking you to check in. Very well, Doctor. Every two to four hours, check in. Very well, Doctor. And I administer the hypo spray. All right. And once he dies, I my face kind of very slackens a bit and I roll my shoulders back and flex my neck and a sense of ease kind of comes over me and I I zip my jacket up feeling better thank you Kat. thank you doctor nurse I kind of just ignore your question and I turn and leave I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried what's going to happen the next time Panek walks past Mirthrin now yeah that's going to be interesting um but as soon as he's he's left, and it's just uh, Pier and uh, Vara in sickbay, Vara kind of looks confused and says, uh, Doctor is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't regulation state that we need to inform uh, Counselor Jisa about this? I was just about to inform both Jisa and Calm the Captain. Uh, I will get in co uh, contact with the counselor if you want to handle the captain. Doctor, patient confidentiality. 
I will take care of the captain. You get a hold of uh, Counselor Jason and inform her. And I'm going to walk up to the bridge to inform the captain. Okay. So we'll cut to the ready room again. I figure at this point, uh, the commander and that whole scene Vetu is has over. definitely left. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Captain, you get a get a chime at your door. Come in. And in steps your doctor. Ah, prayer. Do come in. How's the well, how's the wellness of everyone on board? Uh, bumps and bruises, a broken arm here or there, but so far. Everybody's held up from the jump. Uh, Var and I have looked through our medical supplies, and we have taken preemptive measures to ration all of our medical supplies so that we can handle anything that comes up with the amount of people we have on board. Thank you. Uh, if you need any assistance in the in sick bay, please let me know. Will do. Uh, we are attempting to use a spare bioneuro gel bat. Uh, gel pack and use that to synthesize additional materials should we need it. Very creative. Thank Vara for that. She came up with that idea. I will add. The, I will add your uh, rec your accommodations to her file. But that's not why I decided to pay you a visit today. Oh. I'll lean back in my chair and steeple my fingers. What what brings you up? Mind if we do this securely? Computer activate. Privacy mode. Authorization. Captain Barton Skull. Beta Phi 110. The lights dim and jazz begins playing. No, no. Wrong, <laughs> wrong privacy mode. Wrong privacy mode. <laughs> Captain! <laughs> the computer compensates, but the deed is done. Uh, apologies. Um, you don't want to know. Noted. Um, I just received a visit from Panek. Oh, oh, and how is he doing? Well, I'm breaching so many protocols and doctor-patient confidentiality at the moment, but considering our situation, you need to be informed. He asked for a Lexarin. I'm afraid none of my hosts have had any severe medical experience. What's Lexarin? It is used to uh, alleviate symptoms of multiple personality disorder that result from Vulcan mind melds. I see. Uh, and Andy asked for a dermal regenerator, but that's the Lexarin is more of what I'm concerned about. As am I. I don't believe. Uh, is there any? Hmm. Very well. Make sure that he is uh, comfortable, and make sure that he's uh, scheduled an appointment with. Uh, the counselor at at both of their earliest conveniences, and if he Vara, doesn't attend, please let me know. Will do. Vara was contacting the counselor to inform her that we had to administer the drug. I'm also having Panek uh, give me status reports every two to four hours, and if he ref uh, does not check in, I will be investigating. But I will also then be putting him on medical leave until this is all sorted out. Understood. He did go. He did undergo severe um, mental strain while performing the, the duty. The duties needed to uh, pr save uh, uh, Commander Shatsu from being stuck in a, in that chair for the rest of her life, and it's probably done something to him. And I really hope that he recovers quickly. As do I. I will try to keep you updated. Should Indeed. anything but change in the future, please hold uh, doctor patient confidentiality. I don't, um, in, if, if he is unfit for duty, please let me know. But let's keep the uh, nature of his treatment between you and between you, the counselor, and him. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna very awkwardly now enter the ready room, <laughs> is he? Okay. <laughs> 
All right, hold on. Where is that token? There it is. Um, if uh, I'm I'm not gonna let it be a surprise. If if Panek walks past me to go to the ready room, um, I'm going to. I may not calm the captain, but I'm going to send a signal to the captain's um, uh, computer or screen or whatever on his desk that uh, Panek is effectively barging his way in. Alert, alert, slightly disheveled Vulcan incoming, alert, alert. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Something to that extent. So you're not entirely surprised when Panek shows up at your door. A quick look of surprise does, however, quickly pass, very, very, very quickly pass Panek's face and seeing the doctor. Uh, am I interrupting, Captain? No, we were just wrapping up. Doctor, um, thank you for your report. Uh, please resume your duties. Understood. Thank you, Captain. Commander. And I walk out. Doctor. Yeah. Pass on outside. Panek. Are you more... Are you feeling more yourself? Something to that effect, Captain. Uh, I have not come here to discuss that. Uh, I have, however, come to, to tell you that I am placing myself on restricted duty. I will no longer be overseeing both Alpha and Gamma shifts on the bridge. I understand. Will, um, will you be on... Uh, will, you, will, will I expect you on get Alpha shift next rotation? Uh, I believe I will be doing a staggered uh, duty, sh duty roster. Uh, and I hand him a a pad, and I say, uh, it is all detailed and outlined here, as well as any relevant information needed for Commander Ty. I see that you have uh, placed her into an interim exo position. Indeed. She's, I guess the term would be, she's proving efficient, but quite frankly, I'd rather have you up there. In due time, Captain, I'm sure that the ship will be back to all of its faculties. Right. Um, hang on. I just need to check something in my character background. Um, what was I talking about? Scotty. Sorry, I've had a term that I want to use real quick that I'm just trying to find out where I typed it. Commander, please have a seat. I just stand. Very well. Commander, the skull the skull symbiote is unique, or at least rare in what it does. It's been termed within the Trill so Trill Symbiosis Commissions called it a coadjuvant. Basically, what it does is where a normal Trill symbiote insists is more of a passive entity, um, preferring that preferring to take on its hosts or preferring to absorb its hosts uh, own personality and experiences the skull symbiote does more takes on a bit more of an uh, pri bit more of an active role in shaping its host the the barton that existed before skull was <clears throat> perfectly content living a life where he would never have to set foot off Trill. Uh, he was perfectly happy working a mid-level career in market analysis for a small uh, f family business. The, sc the skull symbiote, once it was implanted inside of Barton, turned him gave him knowledge and experience and allowed him to face live a life of live a life where he could face his fears and there would be those if there would be those in starfleet medicine who would call such a pair who would call such a behavior parasitical so now, I've just told you what's inside of me, and I hope one day you'll be comfortable telling me the stuff that I've recently seen, but you don't have to. I understand the point you're trying to make, Captain, but 
It is one thing to cajole a coward into action, and another to constantly have to fight back to maintain control of a beast. And if there's anything, if there's anything at all that I can do to assist you in such a matter, do not hesitate to ask. I am taking the correct steps and actions, and with Dr. Prayer's uh, acceptance of my uh, admit, admittedly undisciplined uh, requests, I will check in with him from time to time. Hmm. If you feel the need for more safeguards, uh, please let me know. And in the future, if I ever give you an order that puts the risk of this thing getting loose again, you have every right to disobey. I will hold you that, that Captain. There will, there's always another way. We, some, I did a disrespectful thing by forcing you into an uncomfortable situation. And I do hope that this has not tarnished our friendship. I hold up my hand. Captain, this was my duty as, as, the, as the executive officer to maintain and protect all crew members aboard the ship. Yeah. This was not something that you had to ask dearly of me. This is something I did freely. Still, it does not, it does not assuage me of the guilt of, of putting a friend in harm's way. I'll just take my hand out and shake it. Uh, how you choose to assuage yourself of such useless emotion is up to you, Captain. I smile and go, there's the Panek I remember. Get some rest and I'll see you on the next, I'll see you on your next duty rotation. I'll nod and then leave his uh, ready room and head out, out of the bridge and down into the turbo lift. Alrighty. And I tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, let's take our 10-minute break here. Uh, so if you guys could be back by no later than, uh, let's say, 3.57. <laughs> All right, BRB.
I'm back. As am I. I'm unmuted for the stream, so uh, just wanted to say a couple things. First off, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in, either on Twitch or YouTube, and checking out my little corner of the internet. Hopefully you're having a good time. Uh, just as a reminder, if you have Amazon Prime, that means you have a free Twitch Prime subscription. It's basically a free sub to a channel of your choice. Love it if you spend it on me, but if not, uh, hey, you know, at least you're using it. Uh, just remember that uh, if you do sub, sub via Twitch Prime, you have to uh, excuse me. Uh, you have to renew it every single month. It does not automatically roll over. Kind of dumb, but you know it does mean you can move that sub around. Uh, other thing, uh, I'm still looking for a uh, replacement character uh, for the Adiona crew. Uh, so far, uh, I've only gotten a few pings about that, but. Uh, if you are interested in such a thing, uh, just shoot a tweet at me or uh, message me on YouTube or, you know, just get in touch with me some way and uh, we'll see about maybe getting you into the Adiona game. Uh, other than that, I think that's it. So I'm going to mute myself for everybody else. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. Hey, thank you, Scotty. I appreciate it. Not a problem. I just remembered that I renewed my Twitch Prime and went, oh, I need to do that. Because yeah. I never connect, or I renewed my Amazon Prime and I never connected it to Twitch before. It was. It's actually ironic. I was literally just talking about that to the stream. Like, hey, if you've got an Amazon Prime sub. Cool. All right, so I know Drake's going to be a bit. Um, I'm here. I'm just chewing. Okay. Guess we'll wait for the captain and our Mirthrin to come back. Oh, no, I'm here. Okay. Alrighty. Well, uh, I think we're all back then. Uh, Drake obviously is on a work call, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get back into it. So put us back on uh, this screen here. And yeah, 
So uh, at this point, uh, I do want to ask uh, Mirthrin, because I think I'm mm-hmm. you, would you rather work on your miniature stealth pistol with Locke, or would you like to devote your resource and time to fixing the ship? Hmm. Oh. I think Mirthrin's fine to let the oh, existing crew function. handle that. Oh. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything. Oh. oh. My hearing. Anywho, um, yeah, I, I think Mirthrin's okay to let the crew sort of handle it because at the moment it's basically just keeping things in a holding pattern until they get to the station and can actually buckle down and do proper repairs. Okay. So I think he'll actually okay. start on that uh, sort of disassembled man with the golden gun rail pistol. Alrighty. So I'll put us in uh, the not often used science lab. And I see I have to do some uh, token management here. All right, so they're not there. They're not there. Panek is not there. But Locke and Mirthrin are. Let's see. There's Mirthrin. All righty. So uh, the two of you are currently looking at a... uh, schematic for the pistol you have in mind and uh we'll say you can assist each other on this so this is going to be another extended task uh Mm -hmm. this time the difficulty base is going to be a four the magnitude is also going to be a four and the work track is going to be we'll say 15 let's make it 16 Mm -hmm. Um, and the deep end task, or at least for this first bit, is going to be a reason engineering or a reason science. And I'll let you guys right. decide who's actually doing the role and who's assisting. Well, I've got the intense scrutiny talent, so I can like just cut off a whole bunch of resistance on the roll. Great. So I should definitely be the assistee. And uh, reason plus engineering is, I think, my best stat roll. All righty. Well. Uh, you do need uh, four successes here so before you can roll any work. So if you want to spend some of that six momentum you've got, or if you want to spend a determination... Uh, yeah, I think I'll spend three for two extra dice. Okay. May as well use it while it's there. Would I be assisting with the reason engineering or reason... You are assisting reason science. I was like, you're helping me with the theory and then I'm working out how to actually do the actual construction. Exactly. Gadgeteering focus? Sure. And I'm pretty sure I've got a Xeno technology as a talent. Yeah. That uh, value, uh, focus. Yeah. So imagine we're like got the big hologram going and the, the, the kind of the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, doing doing the sort of the, the Iron Man twirl around and pull yeah. bits out to work on them. It's, oh, if we, this is definitely here, we could definitely replace it with a phase called Discriminator. All right. Hey, you get a momentum back. And yeah, sure enough, doing the quote unquote Iron Man thing, you come up with a, what you believe to be a fairly, I I hesitate to use the word easy, but a uh, simple to construct uh, weapon uh, that is a miniaturized version of the Frypo weapon you have on hand. I don't think they would be right. as efficient. And it'll definitely burn the power cells. And it'll probably break mm-hmm. after a half dozen shots. But if, if we need it more than in, six in, times, in a situation where you're completely out of other options, half a dozen shots can be all you need. This is not a, a long term weapon. It's a regular use. And it is only a prototype. Mm. All right. Uh, so do I roll challenge dice at this point? Or. Yes, so you're going to be rolling uh, seven challenge dice, please. Let's see how much resistance I can ignore. Quite a bit. Wow. Mm, Yeah, so yeah, you do seven out of 16 work, which uh, does now make the difficulty a three. So yeah, your design, solid as hell. Uh, You're very confident that you just have to now put theory into practice. Work out all the tiny little kinks that always crop up when you go into practical. Exactly. All right. So yes, this uh, next phase. The next session. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say. So the uh, this next phase of the extended task 
is going to be a control engineering for you, Mirthrin, because this is mm -hmm. the process of you actually putting components together. And Locke, I'll allow you to do a control science in the same vein. Uh, still the extended task? This is still the extended task, yeah. Yep. And uh, I may as well spend another three momentum because this is an RP session, so it's not like we're going to have to get in a fight. And then the Borg attack. <laughs> yeah. You just. You well, I mean, in that case, I don't think any momentum is going to help us. <laughs> All right, got an assist from Locke. Nice. There we go. So there. You're up to five momentum total, I believe. No, uh, you tossed three, so you're at three momentum. I can math today. All right. So, uh, using, we'll say, your own discretionary replicator rations, uh, you are able to construct the shell and uh, several other key components. But go ahead and roll me some more challenge dice. Still seven All challenge right. die. And. See how far along you are on the work track. Yeah. Another you're, solid roll. You're making tremendous progress, and the difficulty is now a two. Uh, at this oh, point, uh, the only thing you really need to figure out is how to miniaturize the ammo component. Uh, if you recall, oh, I sort of stole the idea from Mass Effect, where it's just this cube sort of, of metal like, that's metal. just shaved yeah, sort off. Sort of shaves off stone. microscopic pieces of the metal and flings them exactly so that's probably the only thing left you have to figure out before uh this prototype weapon is complete Alrighty. so for this uh i would say you could uh apply some sort of uh reason with engineering or science uh, you could apply a a daring uh science or engineering uh, or uh, I will take any arguments for anything else. Well, I'm happy to stick with the reason engineering. Okay. And we are only difficulty two, so I think I can get away with only one momentum this time. All right. Let's see how we do. Yep. Careful, don't touch that. That is that is fully charged at the moment. Ah, there we go. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, you're at capped momentum. Very nice. And yeah, if you give me one moment, I will. Uh, let's see. Do I actually have an image? I'll put in uh, Discord. But uh, basically, for those Ooh. of you at home who aren't going to see what I'm putting in Discord. If you ever played Destiny 1 and you remember Thorn, it's basically what these guys construct. Oh. Nice. Well, it's not pretty. But, I mean, mm. the main body can definitely be disguised as a coil scanner. Um, the triggering mechanism, maybe the catalytic converter. Yep. Uh, and uh, if we could hide part of this... See, what, what's a, what, what's a fun sort of... So what's some fun sort of solution that we sort of came up with for the ammo storage, do you think? Hmm. Make smaller ammo? Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Um, idea? Yeah. Sort of. Okay, so we sort of worked out that in order to sort of disassemble this into in simple enough components that it could pass through a weapon scanner, we figured out that, okay, we're going to need to like, take a couple of mini replicators and have the, those replicators construct some components in the process of assembling it, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of like yeah, the, the micro replicator that the Exocom point. Yeah. Well, um, what if once the actual body of the gun's completed, we take any all the excess material in those micro replicators and just turn it into a little ammo manufacturing chamber. Because the thing is, th this thing doesn't need to have particularly well-engineered particles. They just need to be a, a pellet about this many this many millimeter microns across. So it takes all the extra stuff that was kind of like the all the uh, all 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 the uh, extra bits that pulled apart and were set aside because they weren't part of they were just part of the disguise 
and then uses yeah. them to become yeah. ammo. Re reprocess them into ammunition. I mean, it's a it's a bit, a bit inefficient. It'll take a long time to reload, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, burn, I'm hence why I'm so few shots because it burns through a bit of power. Yeah. But, and yeah, you guys should now see that handout, hopefully. Uh, I basically scaled it down from the original rifle, and uh, I increased the rate it overheats. But yeah, you've got a fully functioning backup pistol. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> What uh, um, what's the uh, the the threat rating on it? Uh, you mean like uh, escalation all. cost? Yes. Uh, escalation I'm, cost all. I'm going to say escalation two here. Mm -hmm. Yeesh. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this is like a a very nasty emergency backup. Like we're taking the kid gloves off. And so escalation, but no opportunity cost. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say no opportunity because, you know, it's something you've made yourselves, but uh, it will be definitely too threat for me if you take this thing. Yep. All right. Well. Um, right. I'm pleased with that. Now well, let's archive it on the computers and pray we never need it. I don't know if I'd use the word pleased, but yes, that it's... Uh... Building weapons is definitely not the highlight of my hmm. It does yeah, the job. Well. The job. You, yeah, well, Dominion War, you kind of learned how to weaponize anything that was at hand. Oh, yes. Right. So, uh, we're going to cut away to the bridge. Give me a second to actually get to the bridge. Okay, so uh, at this point, I'm curious. Uh, so, Skull, you would be center chair. Uh, Panek, have you returned to duty yet? Or would you be, this would say, be a day or two later? Maybe two days later. Um, would you be back on duty yet or no? Yeah, I'll, be, I'll stagger onto this one. Okay, so Ty will not be present, and you will be. Hmm. Okay. For the last time, in order to minimize the headaches with the Temporal Prime Directive, duty officers are not supposed to liaise with their offspring. They're, despite working in similar fields, having a great deal of experience, it cuts down the paperwork exponentially. Uh, please make that, a, make that a memorandum and send that to department heads, please. Drake's going to look at Locke with a what the hell happened? Look, after the captain gives that little speech. Gamma shift. <laughs> and, and Drake will just shift. shake his head and go back to his console. Uh, yeah. So, uh, all of you that are normally on the bridge are there. And it is at this point that Sona turns and reports and says, uh, Well, sir, I am happy to report that we are past the temporal window. We should be free and capable of moving wherever we wish without worry of running into our past selves. Splendid. What's the status of the engines? Hold on. Uh, Sona continues to say, we are at best able to go warp 8. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Merthrin reports that we might be able to maintain a short burst of higher warp, but that it is not recommended. I don't, I don't see why we should engage in high warp if we don't have to. Let's set a course around Zenkathy space, and we'll make our way to Starbase, I believe it was 612? 621. Six. Set a course for 621. Done, sir. Engage warp 8. Alright. So the Ophion uh, spools on up and jumps into warp. And when that happens, 
Uh, Mirthrin, I want you specifically to roll me a 1d100, mm -hmm. please. <laughs> All right. I have no idea if that's good or bad. We shall find out. Everything seems to be fine. I, I mean, you know, it's... It's definitely not the the be the warp core is not making the best sounds in the world, but it's not in any danger of imploding or exploding or destabilizing. It's just making a very odd sound. Chief Tin, do we have the supplies needed to make our to make it to Sarbay six two one, or will we need to find a place to refill? I believe, sir, that we will be able to make it if we do not make any stops along the way. You heard him, folks. No stopping. Unless we have to. If we buzz the nebula, we might be able to get some uh, proto-matter, inorganic matter, that we might be able to use to refill our generic matter supply for the replicators. It might buy us another day or two of food. Yeah, out of character, like, how is the food situation? Is it just, we'll manage, it's just a little uncomfortable, or this has the potential to get critical if we're delayed by more than a few days? Probably more the latter. Okay. you are literally running at double ship's complement at the moment. True. Uh, how much of a detour would going into the nebula to scoop up proto matter be? I'd say it would be a... Uh... Maybe a day or two affair. It'd really depend on how much uh, stuff you want to scoop up. Mm. So you pretty much would make up the what you would gain. True. Uh, probably safer if we just head straight for the starbase. And worst case scenario, if we sort of run out of gas most of the way there, we can send out a call and say, help send food. Yeah. That's the plan. All right, best co best course, best speed. Let's go. All right. So, uh, as the Ophion is traveling along a warp, uh, Locke and Drake, at the same time, you both get a message. Did you, did you, oh, pull it up. All right. And to both of you, the message says the same thing. It says, if you are interested in what Harlock had to say... There is a file under, and it gives you like a a spot in the computer core to look for it. Yep. Uh, you will find it unencrypted using the captain's birthday. And it is signed with the letter E, but nothing uh, else. Ooh. Navigate C slash program files slash user slash not porn. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, does it, does it show that it went to someone else too? Uh, no, you two have no idea that the other have re has received it. Okay, then I'm going to try to go as fast as I possibly can to get the file, pull it out of the core, put it into my own personal storage, and then wipe all traces that it was there. Alright, and lock <laughs> um, I'm immediately gonna like serendipitously uh serendipitously pull out Vanessa the tricorder and copy the file immediately. Okay. Uh I would like both Locke and Drake, I'd like you to both just roll me a uh, a D twenty. And have I oh go ahead. At the communications console, did I have any inkling of what's going on or that we received any message? Nope. No messages received. All right. Well, damn it. Well, uh, <laughs> let's just say, for all intents and purposes, uh, Locke, you are able to copy the file, and as you do, you notice that it is immediately deleted as soon as you're done copying it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Drake, that that deletion is you, though, Drake. It's not like it it deleted itself. Yeah. No, I I I figured that. Um, no, I. I was hoping that he wasn't going to try to do the... I, I fully expected him to uh, say he was going to do the exact same thing I was doing. So, um, no, I'm good. No. <laughs> Look, looks a slightly more naive, trusting sort of soul. 
Locke wanted to see if it was accessed again. That's what he wants you to believe, but, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, both of you now have on hand the mysterious file from E, whoever E is. I'm going to throw a full virus scan first before opening. Okay. So uh, you run a scan on it, and uh, you do see that it is formerly encrypted data. And I say that because I imagine there's some sort of lingering uh, encryption but it's nothing you can handle. But you're not detecting anything that would be suggestive of a virus of some sort. Right. Um, pull it up in the tricorder and like while well, while sorting the scan. So left hand, you know, scrolling, right hand, doing the sensor so, logs. Is something wrong with your station, Lieutenant? Just comparing some data. Very well. So, Drake, are you going to look at the file, too, or are you going to wait? Um, I'm going to skim over it at my station, and then... Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll look at it at my station, and then once I'm done, I'll put it back on my own, like, personal uh, memory core, memory bank, whatever. I, I put it on the external hard drive, um, and then I'll wipe all uh, notice of it from my station. All right. So, uh, what you both are able to see then is that these are the logs from the Missouri and from Starfleet Command that you had requested but had not been given access to. And it's a text conversation, and it goes something like this. Uh, the commanding officer of the Missouri uh, is... The name is blacked out for some reason, but it's not like you can't cross-reference to figure out who it is. Um, but the commanding officer of the Missouri uh, radios Starfleet Command to ask what we should do. And the reply comes from an Admiral Sloan. And Sloan says that um, this is... When, when, I, when I read to that point, everybody on the bridge... Here's an audible. Uh, I recognize the name Sloan from somewhere. And so, then he'll cough a couple of times and then go go back to reading it. So quick sidebar: uh, Sloan was the DS9 Section Thirty One operative. He oh that bastard yes. was outed, and that's probably common knowledge. Oh, yeah. So the fact that Sloan is popping up again after his death might be something worth looking into. So the Missouri incident would have been prior, post the uh, Key Space Nine? Oh yeah, yeah. The distress call was heard in 2377. And you guys are now firmly in 2379. Actually, you guys are coming up on uh, Nemesis, so you're almost at 2380. Um, and the, the response back from um, quote-unquote Admiral Sloan. Um, uh, Admiral Sloan is directing the commanding officer of the Missouri to treat it as a training exercise and that no further, ex uh, no further actions are necessary. Um, to his credit, does the commanding officer of the Missouri actually question those orders? He does, but the... Starfleet command, quote unquote, uh, response is to again assert that the Missouri is to ignore it. All right. Mm. The Nick will stand and walk over to to the tactical console. Stand up, stand behind him, and look over his shoulder. Drake's already already erased it and moved it. Boss Lieutenant. Buddy. Uh, is there something uh, the matter? Uh, no, uh, no, XO, uh, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, uh, maybe I need to grab a drink from the refresher real quick. I think I got something <clears throat> in my throat. Uh, I'll, uh, excuse me one minute, and then he'll Very walk well. off, uh, walk off the bridge to, um, um. The neck smells your deception. Um, he'll walk off the bridge 
and go to the nearest refresher and then also make sure that the file is not on his console and uh, put away. Okay. Pernek watches and leaves with a raised eyebrow. Can I tell if he's lying? Uh, are you empathic? No, but I can read. I mean, it's like body language. <laughs> this is um, I um, uh, the the whole way Drake will continue to like try to clear his throat, cough. I'll say as he's walking off the bridge. If if it helps, I have a focus in improvisation. Yeah, I was gonna say let's have uh, let's have Drake. Let's have you roll a. Uh, I'm gonna call this a fitness and con because. Uh, Con is usually used for uh, your appearance and how you handle yourself. And fitness because, well, you have to use your body to sell it. Or at least that's how I'm justifying it. Of course, you have an argument other otherwise we can uh, explore it. So you're rolling a fitness con. And Panek, you're going to be rolling an insight con. And the since this is an opposed check, uh, the base difficulty is a 1. And it's whoever has the most successes. Uh, gentleman's agreement not to use momentum. All right. Oh, son of a bitch. Wow. <laughs> uh, so let's say this, because that complication is amusing to me. Um, um but I, I'm willing to blow, uh, determination and throw whoa, a whoa, value whoa, whoa. out. <laughs> Changing the rules in the middle of the game! <laughs> no, 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 no. I said momentum. I said momentum. <laughs> you know, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to blow my one a day um, oh, God. To, uh, to make this go through. I sort of like how all this is happening and the captain has no idea. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, uh, Skull is dreaming of his rendezvous later with the... Uh, um, with the Romulan commander. That too. Yeah. Let's do this. Uh, let's say that, Panek, you can tell that uh, Drake is not exactly being forthcoming with something, but you don't believe it has anything to do with the state of the ship. I'll, I'll just... Linger there for a second of watching the empty turbo lift door. Or, I mean, the closed turbo lift door, and then I will just head back to my station. All right. So while all that's going on, what are you doing, Locke? The ship's getting more intrigue in it than a midsummer county. <laughs> wheels within wheels. Um, I'm being much more. Uh, Subtle in my reading as I slowly scroll through my, my the reading, mm -hmm. while also kind of doing my own little work. Okay. Well, I'm just uh, I'm gonna get to slow, and I'm just kind of like raise a well a brow ridge. I don't have eyebrow. I'm like quietly, you know, hmm to myself. All right. Did I ever get the information back from? Um, Contacts about the the Nezkov. You have indeed. Um, and since I wasn't sure what you wanted, um, and yeah, I'll write it down for next time, so I have something a little bit more pointed. But you get everything from when the first contact was made with the Nezkov to when they signed on with the Federation. Yeah, that's I thought I, thought I recall. So um, I'm gonna kind of take the um, the names and the data and stuff like that from the the, the current file and kind of cross-reference that with the Nezkov and see if there is, like, Sloan. Kind of do a keyword search for, like, stuff like Sloan. Well, now that you know what to look for, yeah, Sloan's got his hands in this cookie jar as well. In fact, he was the admiral who pushed for a more streamlined and ex expedited process to get the Nezkov into the Federation. Hmm. Interesting. Especially since he's not using an alias. Or is he? That's the, uh, the question. Is there actually an Admiral Sloan on file? There is. Uh, however, when you go to pull up their... Uh, what are they called? Personnel oh, yeah. files. 
uh, you see that uh, it is a older gentleman. I'd say probably late 60s. Uh, so he's obviously got balding gray hair going on. Uh, if you've ever seen Colin Mockery on Who's Line, same hairstyle. Very um, familiar with Colin Mockery. Yeah, we'll we'll just go with Colin Mockery. That, like, like, that's Admiral Sloan. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> yep. you know, let's just say Admiral Sloan looks like Colin Mockery. There you go. Or Admiral yeah. Paris. Or Admiral Paris. <laughs> we never seen them together in the same room. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he seems to have a fairly, I would call it standard uh, resume for an admiral. Anyway, uh, he was. Uh, what's the word I want? He was very prolific in the Zenkethi conflict. Uh, he was also behind getting Starbase 621 uh, back up and running to full capacity. And after the Dominion War, he focused primarily on the Shackleton Expanse. But he doesn't look like the Sloan that uh, we would know. Correct. And... Um, then I think something that I would end up doing is taking, um, yeah, those two are almost identical. Um, I would end up taking and trying to run a, a scan over the images to see if maybe the Admiral Sloan, like, uh, what I'm trying to say is like wearing prosthetics or something. No, if the you. bone structure, the facial structure, if it's the same person, but wearing the prosthetics. Roll me a insight con. Uh, difficulty three here. Uh, that is not a money stat. All right. Uh, and yeah, I don't have anything for a focus for this. Yeah. So oh. if if he is using prosthetics. Uh, he's using very good ones because you're not really able to tell if like his nose is face or if his bridge line or his, uh, his brow has been enhanced. I mean, it, it looks completely natural. Okay. <laughs> I'm to get farther into Starfleet territory before I can like get into the systems and actually compare like, <laughs> like just kind of like compare the uh, the uh, dates and where the actual admiral was when the orders were given. Okay. Um, yeah, and right. it's funny because I was gonna say the same thing that yeah. is once we get into the starbase, then I'm really just probably gonna sequester myself into whatever quarters and just like pour over this alrighty uh, does anyone else have any scenes they'd like to get out of the way I'd just like to ask real quick Com computer locate Lieutenant Drake and then I walk back on the bridge cancel that order computer and I, I lock eyes with him and watch him walk back to his station and I give him the most uh, about the same level of shit eating grin that I did um, back on uh, Theta Sigma 12 when he kind of got a taste of what's in my head. Just a just a smile like there's absolutely nothing wrong and I go back to my station uh, thank the person who took over for me and then I go back to what I was doing. Alrighty. Uh, I could really use some holodeck time after this past couple weeks. But Tin, of course. Uh, Tin just kind of trips up and says if you're interested, Lieutenant, I have a lovely relaxation program on Risa. Uh, oh. I actually have a, a fairly low energy uh, aerobic activity um, that so, um, Lieutenant Chatsu has been pushing me to try. Oh, is uh, that what we're calling it now? Um, well, Drake, um, Drake nods and smiles and goes, no, no, that's uh, uh, Chief Ten. That's, that's totally what we're calling it now. No, it's a. Uh, you actually lower the uh, power on the grab plating in the hollow deck, and so it's significantly less, while adding some kind of force fields, and you get kind of a trampoline jump park effect, which uh, is um is extremely. You just you jump super high, but every movement uses a lot of energy. Uh, so Drake, just bring about. Drake is 
got like a smile and he's just nodding over and over like oh yeah <laughs> yeah zero g huh uh-huh well it's a uh, 0.6 g but um she uses it while sure. blasting floating drone i mm -hmm. use it so i for, absolutely for, i for use you. the same technique mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just happy to see my senior staff getting along so well and with that, my dear players, I think this is where we'll end the session. Uh, mm -hmm. So, of course, I'd like to uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, welcome back to our main campaign. Uh, players, stick around for a little bit longer. But to anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, thanks so much and see you later. Bye-bye.